So our first speaker today is Loretta Maron, who is from Friends of Science and Medicine and uh, Order of Australia, I believe, and uh, Multiple Skeptic of the Year, which is amazing by itself. So please give a round of applause to Loretta. I'll be talking a little bit about complementary medicines and alternative therapies today, so um, the fish acupuncture one was of great interest. <laughs> I've had thoughts like that about some alternative therapists, <laughs> slicing and dicing. <clears throat> right, I've spent at least the past decade trying to investigate to understand the difference between fact and fiction, evidence and anecdotes, science and pseudoscience in relation to complementary medicines, that's the products that you eat, and alternative therapists and what they offer, which I'm going to call CAM. Today I'll be sharing with you some of the things I've learnt along the way about the regulation and about why I think successive governments choose to ignore what's going on and why we should be concerned. Now my presentation today is called Friends of Science and Medicine, so I'll be talking about why a group of us felt the need to set this up, who we are, what we're about and how, how you can help us. Here we are, well into the 21st century, the most scientific of all ages. But hang on, shopping centres, supermarkets, pharmacies, health food stores, and then there's shops in main streets, high streets, back streets, in homes, under homes, converted garages, petrol stations, in the country, in the city. You don't have to travel very far to find someone making remarkable health claims about some intervention to do with with health that has no credible evidence. The complementary medicine industry is massively rich. They have money to set up offices in Canberra where they can you know, put money towards government political liaison. They have money to afford the best lobbyists. And that's what we're dealing with. It's a four billion dollar industry growing at 12% per annum. A lot of jobs, predicted to be the number one growth area of jobs for 2014. That's a lot of taxes. That's a lot of jobs. That's a lot of reasons for politicians to turn a blind eye. It's not a level playing field. If you have a prescription drug, you cannot advertise it anywhere. On the TV. But you can say anything you want about complementary and alternative medicine and there's absolutely no effective way of stopping you, barring staggering to the steps of Parliament House, bleeding all over the place. There's very little motivation for them to do anything. There's two sorts of pseudoscience that are of great interest to us. The first is the stuff where you'd have to rewrite physics, chemistry books and physiology books. And the second is when there is some evidence of some benefit to some people but, of course, the claims are grossly exaggerated. Energy medicine is particularly of interest for alternative therapists. They've got their own definitions of why you're sick. It could be that your cells lack energy. Or in acupuncture, it could be that the channels around your body are blocked in some way. Now, of interest to me is fundamentalist chiropractic, where they believe that you're sick because the energy cannot get through from your organs to your brain. It is blocked by these invisible lesions on the spine that, that stop it going forward, and only they can remove them. They will tell you that as the baby goes through the birthing canal, they get these lesions on their spine. They call them vertebral sublocation complex or sublocations, and that causes the child to be sick. So you, they have to, a parent has to take their child to be adjusted soon after they're born, and up to six times before they can crawl. And they claim that they can treat ADHD, asthma, allergies, bedwetting, colic and ear infection by adjusting the child. And all they do is they press down the baby's back, the same pressure you would press on a ripe fruit. And, and the thing is they also say is this boosts the immune system so the children do not need vaccination. Homeopathy was in the press a lot this year the National Health and Medical Research Council spent $140,000, took three years to look at 800 submissions from homeopaths. 
And they came up with the same conclusion they came up with three years ago, that it doesn't work. It's a placebo. Now, homeopathy is diluting and shaking to get vital force. And you take it, and it's meant to boost your own energy. Crystal healing. Midwives are putting crystals at the bottoms of the beds of women about to have, give birth. And that's the vibrational energy in the crystal is meant to, to help them in some way. <clears throat> we have Reiki, where your hands are meant to be energised to pass your life force energy to the patient. Then we go on to channels, invisible channels. Now, with iridology, I mean, they can take a photo of your eye to diagnose you. Your eye map, just the coloured bit, is mapped into different parts of your body. So they can look at one little section there and say, ah, you have kidney disease. And they can do all this, as I say, from a photo. Reflexology, your hands and your feet have got body parts mapped all over them. So massage under my toes and I'll fix my eye infection. Not too bad. Auriculotherapy, took me a long time to pronounce this word, so I've actually got an image of it at the end. That's where your ear has got body parts mapped on it. And so you will put a fine needle in your ear, different spots, or a little clamp, or even stick a little pellet, and that's meant to cure you. The chiropractors get professional development hours for att attending courses to learn how to do this. Kinesiology is another weird and wonderful thing. I saw someone with a power balance, power balance bracelet on earlier on. <laughs> the whole idea with kinesiology is you hang on to a product with one hand and the practitioner pulls down your other arm and they, depending on how strong you're feeling, they'll say, ah, you're allergic to this or you have a deficiency in this. Mm -hmm. Now, chiropractors have their own version where they lay the baby on the parent's tummy and they'll put a finger on the baby's back and they'll yank the parent's arm down and make the same sorts of, you know, diagnostics. Then we have diagnosing you on your aura. Or there's another one where you are di or treated based on the colours of your chakras. So they'll shine a green light on you for your heart, orange light on you for your kidneys. Really weird stuff. Now, a lot of naturopathy and Chinese traditional medicine is full of sorts of odd ideas. Hypnotherapy, massage, meditation, all great stuff, but they won't cure cancer. To be fair on a lot of CAM practitioners, they're not going to kill everybody. They're not going to kill anybody. Some of them give perfectly good lifestyle advice. Some of them do help them. with people with back manipulation. They can ease their pain. And if you meet them, they're the nicest people, really are nice. And they engage with people. They give psycho psychosocial support. They know them by their first name. Danny, my kinesiologist. Storm, my naturopath. Oh. <laughs> you all heard that one. <laughs> so they're not all out there to, to rip people off. And most of them seem to believe in what they're doing. But the problem is, if you have heart disease, diabetes, or early cancer, and you go along to your alternative therapist, they might not pick it up. In fact, they probably wouldn't. So you're delaying treatment, effective treatment. We've seen a lot of cases of this. Now, they actually confiscated some Chinese traditional medicines coming into this country at Customs. They did a DNA analysis of it to find that it was laced with uh, toxic plants. It had endangered species DNA in it. And it also had prescription drugs. So you're not sure what you're taking. Now, any time you put anything in your mouth that you didn't get from a butcher or a greengrocer, consider it a drug. And you can't tell a drug where to go. And we're all different. There's a woman in South Australia took black cohosh for menopause. Stuff doesn't work for a start. She had a bad reaction to it. She's on her second liver transplant. Two years ago, they were threatening to shut down St. Andrew's clinic, cancer clinic in Toowoomba because they didn't have enough money. The, the health dollar is tiny, but you and I, in our tax dollars, are funding the homeopathy, introduction to homeopathy at well, Southern Cross University. We're funding sublocation theory at um, Central Queensland University. We're funding all these weird courses because our tax dollars pay for the universities. 
We're also funding it through our private health insurance. We're funding people to go consultants, con con you know, to go and meet with naturopaths and all that consultations, because the government pays 30 cents in the dollar towards private health insurance. And I certainly object to my money being wasted that way. I'd rather it went to health. Now, you might decide, I don't want to vaccinate my, my baby. What happens when the toddler comes home with whooping cough? What about the rights of the baby next door who's too young to be vaccinated? We've seen a number of deaths in this country from whooping cough. And it's not just that. Measles is coming back. Measles in 2011 killed over 150,000 people in the world. These are killer diseases. And we're finding hospital beds full of small children with whooping cough with vaccine-preventable diseases. That's a cost to the health system. When older people get it, they're off work, cost to communities, money we can't afford to waste, and most unnecessary. Now, if you've ever said, our local pharmacy is just a ripper. You have to go through a tunnel of alternative medicine and stuff to get to the counter. You go past the detox foot patches and the homeopathy and the deep the candles and all that. And then you wait for your script and you watch people go past with baskets full of goods that I'm fairly sure their doctor didn't suggest they buy, that their medical doctor, that they don't need. And it's hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. But in reality, the worst cost is the delay to the treatment. If your cancer treatment is delayed six months, bigger surgery, more time off work, more, more time to recuperate. Then we have people like Penelope Dingle in West Australia who decided to use homeopathy for her rectal cancer. Now, the homeopath wouldn't even let her take painkillers. That woman would have died in shocking pain. And then, of course, Steve Jobs, CEO of Apple, genius. He could afford the best treatment in the world. He chose to use diet to cure his potentially treatable pancreatic cancer. And even at the end, he admitted he had done the wrong thing. And we have lost an icon. So there's a huge cost. Now, I first started to learn about chiropractic when Dr. Simon Singh in the UK in 2008 wrote an article in the Guardian newspaper to say that chiropractors were offering bogus treatments. And the British Chiropractors Association decided to sue him. Now, with the laws over there, it took him two years of his career and £100,000 before they dropped the case. So I decided to look here what was happening in Australia. And sure enough, our chiropractors were making identical claims. Now, these people were self-regulated until I heard in July 1, 2010, that this organisation called APRA was about to start. And I thought, fantastic, I'll wait till they start. Now, if you look at their website, they say they're partnering with 14 national bodies to regulate practitioners. And I thought, at long last, we can do something about the, the uh, alternative practitioners, chiropractors, osteopaths. This is just something I've been waiting for. So, Loretta Fashion spent five months, wrote five fairly thick reports about chiropractic. One report was on how they're targeting babies and children, another on anti-vaccination. Now they're on courses, how they, how they do things. So one after, month after month. Next thing I get an email from APRA, they'd like to meet with me in Brisbane. So they flew up, we had a meeting. They said, your work's good. And this was the legal people. They said, but there's nothing we can do about it now. We're too new. If we went to court, they'd chuck it out. So we were actually going on holidays the next day and I thought, but why? Why are these people saying these things? I don't understand why. Perfectly nice people are targeting babies and children. Then I realised, as the sceptics have, they're teaching it in the universities. And I was right. And shortly after that, the sceptics did their report, which I think identified over 30 universities teaching some sort of pseudoscience. But in reality, APRA has no mechanism to monitor these practitioners. So it's still a free-for-all. They can do what they want. Friends of Science in Medicine. We incorporated ourselves in uh, December to foster good science in medicine. I'll introduce the 
the co-founders. Professor John Dwyer used to run the Department of Medicine at the University of New South Wales. He was an immunologist back in the days when HIV came into this country. He saw his AIDS patients rob blind before they died. Alistair McLennan, obstetrician gynaecologist. He was so concerned about his pregnant ladies, what they were eating, the effect on them and their fetuses. Rob Morrison, very high profile science communicator, well known to the skeptics. He's worried about the dumbing down of school curriculums and at university as well. Now, I met Professor Marcello Costa. He contacted me and said, I, I have medical students at Flinders University. Could you recommend an academic to teach them about CAM? Well, we never found one. The ones we found were all true believers. And there's me. And more recently, we've had two amazing women join us, Dr. Sue and Joanne, who's well known to the skeptics as well. So that's the seven of us. One thing we want is to try to wind back pseudoscience out of university health courses. The other one, we want to engage with regulators to see what we can do, that's politicians and those running APRA and other places, to see if we can reduce the harm caused by these therapies. Mm. Early 2011, we found that uh, Central Queensland University, this is Queensland, our state, was about to start up a Bachelor of Science Chiropractic. It was being set up by the Chiropractors Association of Australia, who I know are proudly fundamentalist. So I contacted the professor and says, well, is there some, anything we can do about this? This is really bad news. And they said, we have to wait till we know for sure who's running that degree. What we found is the same guy that I had exposed several years earlier from RMIT, he had stood down three weeks after I showed that he'd set up a paediatric chiropractic clinic and was running fundamentalist chiropractic, been elected to the chiropractic, the Chiropractors Association board. He was going to run this. So we knew it was going to be fundamentalist. And he's, proud, he's happy to admit that it's going, he's teaching sublocation theory. So we decided to write a letter. We wrote a letter to the Central Queensland University asking them to rethink their course. And we had over 30 professors sign it. And we thought, well, if we can get 30, maybe we can get 100 professors to sign it. And this was the catalyst. This university was the catalyst for starting up this, this uh, organisation. First thing when you set up an organisation, think of a name. So we bantered around a few names. We thought friends of sounded not quite as threatening as skeptics or something like that. It, it, you, you know, skeptics, it's a bit of a bad rap for their name. Then we worked out the logo was good. Rob Morrison's son did the logo. Then we worked out, well, how can the five of us take on the world? And we thought, OK, we'll work at subgroups underneath. So there's a lot of passionate people out there, paediatricians, pathologists. We'll work with them. So we'll try to push the work down. Now, this was... Um, 20th of December, we decided to launch. Two reasons. Early December, you can't get hold of an academic. They're marking papers and they've got students. But come about the 20th, the feed up, glass of wine out, they might read their emails. We also realised in mid-January, the journalists would be looking for stories. So we thought this is the time to go for it. And also the alternative medicine people would be partying somewhere else. Now, the professors were lucky. They were going to loads of Christmas party and they know all sorts of professors and important people. Myself, I went through the university websites looking for people I thought that might like to support us. The next thing we then had to write down what our principles and commitments were. What are we for? What are we against? We had to be crystal clear that if we were attacked, we had our story ready. So between Christmas and New Year, my job was to set up the website. I went to get one to find I couldn't. If you want a website with a .au, you have to be incorporated. So the next thing we had to sit there and write down articles of associations to get ourselves set up. Of course, the press came back in January. You know, the, the genie was out the bottle. All hell broke loose. We're doing all these things. Trying to set up the website, trying to populate it. Not, not something you can do overnight. Well, the first day I think I cracked the bottle of champagne was the 5th of March when we... The website was launched, the first newsletter was out, 
I thought we're going to make it. And when we look back, between ourselves, we had 3,000 emails. Now, we didn't see Christmas. We didn't see New Year. It was just full on. But that's the way it had to be. And it worked. We didn't just target medical people. This is a battle for science. So we look for scientists as well. The first 10, we look for award winners. Anybody won scholarships or awards or anything like that? We wanted people that would impress the media. And it was just fantastic. The first 10 weeks, 500 people came and joined us. We do have on file now, we have um, Nobel Prize winner. We have more than 60 Order of Australia recipients. We've got lots of people who have won awards. But we've also got mums and dads, airline pilots, all sorts of people to join us. It's terrific. We've got 20 organisations aligned to us as well. We've got quite a number of the who's who from overseas. Erdogan, Simon Singh, UK. Because it's not just our problem in Australia. England has a problem, New Zealand, most countries have Canada have a problem. It's worldwide, even Korea, China. The one good thing is that we've been able to do is get a lot of journalists on side, so we've had a lot of publicity. Hopefully some of you have heard of us before today. <laughs> and as you can imagine, the publicity isn't always positive. When we wrote down our initial thoughts, was universities, number one. Then it was private health insurance. That was the concern, because they were legitimising it. I was finding there were hundreds of acupuncture websites that were claiming it was effective because of the World Health Organisation. I thought that needed to be looked in as well. And then we brainstormed a few other things, you know, pathology, vets, the whole lot. There's an enormous number of areas that are impacted by alternative medicine. So we're not going to get to them straight away, but we're getting there. Last year, the end of last year, we actually it took us 12 months to do pathology recommendations. And what that meant is we went round with a bunch of distinguished pathologists to work out what's good and what we don't recommend. And the good thing about that is it was endorsed by the Royal College of Pathologists of Australasia, which was fantastic for them to come in on board. And this year, what we're looking at is specific products. Live blood analysis actually is a device called Hemiview, comes out of Northgate here in Queensland. You've heard of Inner Health Plus and Ethical Nutrients? Health World Proprietary Limited has a subgroup practitioner only called Metagenics, and they are the ones promoting this uh, live blood analysis. And this is the idea of, of a drop of blood on a slide. They can diagnose all your deficiencies, and guess what? They've, I'm sure they've got a complementary medicine to help you. Now, the whole concept of cranial osteopathy is where they touch your head and they feel that some cranial rhythm there. And they think, right, and they do this with babies and they claim that they can, guess what, treat ADHD, asthma, allergies, bedwetting, cold, same sort of thing as the chiropractors. That's of concern. That's in our universities. Visceral manipulation is where they really press on your tummy and they claim your organs have some sort of memory. We, we have chiropractors doing short, medium, long-term courses in paediatrics and they're setting themselves up as being as effective as paediatricians who have done like 20 years education. And we've also got them doing chiropractic neurology where they've done a course in this and they're claiming they can fix all sorts of autism and ADHD problems with children. That's of great interest to us. And the courses are all approved by the chiropractic board. And we're, if there's an opportunity for a submission, we'll put one in. But we, we have made a difference in a small way. We're getting there. The World Health Organization website had a page that said acupuncture is clinically proven to be effective for, and effective for but needs more research, 100 health conditions, including whooping cough, dysentery, depression, and so on. It was actually on their website. After six months writing to them, they've dropped the website page and they've invited uh, John Dwyer and Cochrane to Geneva to talk about terms of reference for a bit more safety in Chinese, I call it traditional complementary medicine. So we've made a bit of a difference there. <laughs> they haven't given us the date yet. We haven't got the airline tickets, <laughs> but the page is gone. Our report, now the AP, 
LF is the Australian Pharmacy Liaison Forum. It represents 10 pharmacy groups, the Guild, hospital pharmacists, all the rest of it. They've supported our pathology recommendations. So that's a ma massive step as well. Let's see what they can do with it. Better Health Channel, those of you that know about the Better Health Channel, it's run by the Victorian government. And they have abdicated all their alternative medicine uh, information to the alternative medicine people. Now we did have some luck at the beginning. RMIT did the one on chiropractic and they took all the claims about the babies and children off the website. Um, recently, this Better Health Channel had a big ad for Homeopathy Awareness Week. So we got a letter from them that they had dropped that and that they were investigating their um, alternative medicine pages, but they didn't say who was going to review them. So APRA, bless their little hearts. <laughs> They've actually done some random audits of courses. I've given them another list of 100, might keep them busy. But two courses that are very interesting that have been dropped, the one on anti-vaccination, where they bought a high-profile anti-vaccination guy from America, they've dropped that one. And also the one on how to grow your business to be mostly babies and children. That one no longer gets professional development hours either. So it's a good start. The big review coming up for APRA, uh, starting in a few months, will last nine months, will end, I think, May next year. So that's an opportunity for people to put in a submission as to why it needs a bit more teeth. Victoria University, our first university, bless their wonderful hearts. They actually wrote to us to say they had pulled out, removed all reference to cranial osteopathy from their curriculum, except for discussion. So that was a big step for that university to actually write to us to say they've pulled it. And I say lots and lots of media attention. May that continue. Now, you won't find the professors and I tied up in chains outside Parliament House. We're not going to do that. We will. Now, I got an email from media two weeks ago, and this woman said, I talked to people over 45, and I've just had a great interview with a neurologist. I'd like to have a balanced <laughs> viewpoint. God, I hate that word. <laughs> So I put her on to an associate professor of, you know, ophthalmology. And I thought, and I said, next time, feel free to contact me again. Every time we get one of these people on, if you do their work for them, if you give them great experts, there's a good chance they might come back. So that's something that, I hate that word, balanced. We also have a monthly article in uh, Australasian science called The Bitter Pill. So, and that's not just us writing it. Any of our friends can, can write an article for that. I've met politicians down the Gold Coast, in Canberra, in Melbourne. So we're out there flying around trying to talk to politicians to try to get, get to them. I mean, if the Chiropractors Association can afford the best in the world lobbyists, the best, we really need to counteract that with actually being there, showing them that we're real flesh and blood and we mean what we're doing. Uh, one of our the alternative websites was complaining that we were a powerful lobby group. So I take that on with great pride. <laughs> and we're here for the long run. The way you can help, you can join us. And if you feel inclined to actually contribute, well, we're more than happy for people to put complaints in and to do other tasks as well. But the important thing is that we keep growing and we get lots of people like yourselves who like to stir things up a bit. I'm easy to find. <laughs> now, for those of you who'd heard of auriculotherapy? Right, go on. Well, here we see the body parts. <laughs> Don't laugh, they do this with the American army. <laughs> it's one of their therapies that they use there. I just thought that was great. It took me a while to work out. Bottom jaw, head, it's all covered there. That's a hard one to see, yeah. I put that one on the front of a report when I was challenging professional development hours because they were getting points for studying that and lots of other mumbo jumbo. Now, do you have any questions? No, no. I think it's a bit like that. 
Well, they said it looked like the shape of a fetus. You know, I think it's the 1950s. It doesn't matter. Well, the one thing about alternative therapies is that they have a lot of money because they don't have to do too much research. <laughs> okay, well, I must... One thing is just thank the sceptics. As I say, I've won, picked up three awards as a sceptic of the year personally twice and from my organisation. And I don't think we would have had a hope without their support. I certainly would have given up long ago. So I think a big thanks to the sceptics around Australia and... <laughs> All right, private health insurance, we actually put that on hold because the previous government gave the chief medical officer a million dollars in 12 months to look at 31 natural therapies. One of them was homeopathy, but that one was actually, I think, already in the pipeline, which is why they were able to release that. So there's no point in doing anything with private health insurance until that report comes out, which may be, we should have been the beginning of the year, but maybe April next year, but it's going to be at the discretion of the health minister who may decide not to release it at all. So that's the, the feedback we're getting. Um, so we're going to have to put pressure on them to put the results out because we know that results will be fair and honest. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.